hands together for Glenn Cohen, everybody. to be here at Dangerfields. I mean, I'm finally getting some respect. Uh, I, no, no, for real. Uh, I'm having the time of my life doing stand-up comedy. I love the audiences. The audiences have been loving me back. Actually, I think they're in awe. I will be up here for the next three hours. You will not hear a peep out of anyone. Oh, man, I am feeling that low. Uh, no, really, uh, I can't think of any place else I'd rather go. I can't think of a place. Uh, I'm trying. Uh, I've been wearing this Hawaiian shirt all year. I mean, in New York, this was the mildest winter I can remember. Uh, mostly due to heavy drug use. Uh, and that onset of dementia. Uh, no, really, uh, when I told my mother I wanted to do comedy, she was absolutely mortified. She started screaming at me. A stand-up comedian? Why can't you be a porno star? Like your brother! I bet you had no idea Gilbert Gottfried was my mother. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my dad was a lot more understanding. He was like, Glenn, you know, I think it's about time somebody Jewish did comedy. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, gosh, uh, again, I've been wearing this shirt all year. I, I have no fashion sense at all. I mean, do these pants make me look bald? <laughs> uh, I can't tell. Uh, my name's Glenn Cohen. If you run into anybody named O'Brien, you instantly know they're Irish. If you run into anybody named Cohen, you instantly know they're Jewish. Uh, right. uh, I looked it up in a dictionary three weeks ago. Cohen is the Hebrew word for O'Brien. <laughs> When I was 13 years old, I hung out with a really tough gang in Hebrew school. Uh, no, no, you could tell we were tough. We all wore leather yarmulkes. Uh, we even had our own form of self-defense. It's called I Sue. Uh, no, no, it's a form of jujitsu. Uh, <laughs> Kid comes over to me one day, he goes, Glenn, can I talk to you about Jews for Jesus? I'm like, damn it! I just signed up with Bar Mitzvahs for Buddha. <laughs> Gosh, uh, I, I, I am not making the world's best financial decisions. In, in fact, I, I'm in such bad financial shape, I've had to move back in with my parents. <laughs> They're dead. <laughs> so it's really creepy. Uh, now, I quit my real job three and a half years ago in anticipation of the 2012 apocalypse. <laughs> and the Mayans let me down. Uh, walked out of that place, slammed the door behind me, said, screw you, you'll never see me again, which was a really bad idea because I was working from home. Uh, but, you know, in the last three and a half years, I pissed through my life savings trying to figure out what I wanted to be, but at least now I know. Uh, I wanted to be broke. And it is working out. Uh, yeah, really. I, I don't have a 401k plan. Uh, my retirement plan is Alzheimer's. No, I'm looking forward to it. I, Get a new Hawaiian shirt every day. Uh, you get carte blanche to ask people stupid questions. Uh, excuse me, uh, is this Tuesday or a spoon? Guy came up to me once and goes, Glenn, you, you got to stop talking about the Alzheimer's Foundation. You're going to piss them off. I'm like, 
screw the Alzheimer's Foundation, like they'll remember. Um, no. Uh, uh, in terms of other work, I, I am a member of the Screen Actors Guild, and I have been a background person in over 300 major motion pictures. Uh, I also have a degree in theater, so technically I'm a method extra. Uh, no, I have a 13-page biography on the Internet Movie Database. Uh, ever since I learned they let you edit that yourself. Uh, the main, the first rule of being an extra on a movie is you cannot initiate a conversation with a star. If they talk to you, of course you can talk back, but you cannot start that conversation. Three months ago, I get called to be a mourner at a wake. An Academy Award Best Actress, Holly Hunter, walks over to me and goes, when they read the eulogy, you're going to come and comfort me. Cool. Uh, they call action. I walk over to Holly Hunter. I bend over, and I start gingerly stroking her arm. I'm getting paid for this. Uh, and then I got ballsy. I whispered in her ear, I am so, so sorry for your loss. And she whispered back, thank you. Thank you. You're so kind. There's no joke here, people. I'm just bragging. Uh, no, really. It, it could have gone a lot worse. She could have whispered back, shut the fuck up. You're just an extra. But what made it one of the worst days of my life, the guy reading the eulogy was Tony Shalhoub. Monk from TV. What? Yeah, 30 years ago, he and I played twins in an equity show. Uh, I must have taken like 40 showers with that guy. No, for real. So the whole time I'm making eye contact, hoping he'd recognize me. He never did. I got morosely depressed. Uh, and right before they arrested me, <laughs> I got blackout drunk, and they said I was outside of his trailer, stark naked, shouting, Do you recognize me now, Tony? <laughs> Do you recognize me now? <laughs> and they arrested me. <laughs> Because I was not allowed to initiate that conversation. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. Uh, God, I've had a lot of crazy jobs. Uh, in order to make ends meet, because you make a fortune being a stand-up comic. Uh, uh, I wrote a self-help book. Uh, if you guys buy it, it helps me. Uh, <laughs> But I love doing comedy. I love all the comics I work with. I'm having the damn time of my life. Uh, I saw this guy on the train the other night. And I thought he was a comedian. And I gave him that international symbol for, are you a comedian? <laughs> and he got real excited and came over to me. And just as he got next to me, I realized this was not the guy I thought it was. <laughs> And this guy thought I was offering him a blowjob. <laughs> there, there is no way to gracefully extricate yourself from that situation. So I blew him. Uh, what the heck, you know, the first time I had a dick up my ass, uh, I said, that guy is totally gay. Hey guys, I've been Glenn Cohen.